one of the good things about Tassie is all the free camps, um, which the other states in, in Australia should learn from. Um, found this one here over near Waratah. I'm going to walk into um, Philosopher's Falls. It's about an hour walk, so um, it's supposed to be one of the best ones around. So looking forward to that. There's some history about it, so I'll walk down to the boards and have a look and tell you about that. But yeah, just all these free camps. Um, yeah, it wasn't sort of eerie last night. It's quiet, like there's no birds like at home. It's just dead quiet. You might hear the odd um, squawk or something in the bush, and sort of that makes your eyes sort of pop out, but <laughs> that's about all it is. It's just quiet, but beautiful. Reading some of the info back there, um, it was James Smith uh, back in 1871 that found the falls. Um, he left Devonport on foot with his dog um, and they walked for several weeks along the north coast and he came to a point where he had to head south. Um, he had two choices. He thought he could either walk down to Mount Bishkoff where they were already mining and prospecting or head into this other virgin land and he decided to come this way and that's when he found the falls. Um, there's a bit more history, a bit more to it than that. So I'll put a link up below the video when I finish and um, so you can have a big read. But um, he wanted to save the island back then, back in 1871. Um, save the wilderness and he sort of knew what, what was happening and he could see a future I suppose and um, glad he did. So yeah, this forest is unreal, unreal. Like big, big pines. I was reading the other day about all the mining they've done through Tassie and they did this in the um, mid 1800s um, so no machines just solid hard work with picks and shovels um, for a constant decent supply of water they built a series of water races all over the um, island or where the mines are and along the track here to the waterfall here's one of the, um, the water races you can see it down there it just goes on all, all the way down to where I'm going to, so yeah, good part of the history. And come around the corner, and here's a boardwalk on one of the races. You can see they've cut beside the solid rock. And what I was reading to the other day is that somebody was in charge of each section of the water race, and they used to have to walk it every day to make sure that it was flowing right, no blockages, and, and everything was cool. to show you just how much work they put in. You can see the race where I've just come from um, and this solid wall here. You know I'm over six foot tall and this is higher than me and it's, it's sheer rock and look at the work they've done. No one in their right mind will do this these days. It wouldn't even be allowed. Unbelievable. Some cool history. Well I reckon this is my turn point. The race just keeps on going and going. It actually goes to a place called Magnet. Uh, which uh, was a, a town back in the day before Waratah got settled. Um, when the mine folded up, they just closed everything down and everything got sold off. But the only way to get there was um, 
um, a, a tram on timber lines and with pack saddles, but now there's just nothing there anymore. So down the bottom we go, and I will hopefully see the falls. You know what worries me? What goes down must come up. Holy crappy holy. Sorry mum for swearing, but holy dooly. <laughs> this is gonna be huge. So here we go, Philosopher's Falls. Pretty cool. It's dark. It's um yeah, it's unbelievable. My tip, uh, come when it's cool, come early in the morning. Um, it's about 10 past eight at the moment in the morning. Um, come on an overcast day, so you can get some pretty good photos and enjoy the walk. Um, and you get here before the crowds. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's like what it was back in the old days. Got like an old sluice in there. Um, it's all old gear. Well, it felt like a stamper mill. And I reckon this press a button. Here we go. Yeah. friggin that I'll only do it once but yeah I'll have a look around here but Waratah put it on your map come here beautiful so as you can see up there that's um, Mount Bishkoff mine here in Waratah just on the outskirts of town but I just found this other sign uh, there's a waterfall down here so I'm gonna cruise the track and see what it's like so that's two waterfalls in the same town so Philosopher's Falls and probably Waratah Falls just below where that water wheel was so um yeah, it should be cool. So I'm at the base of where the, the water wheel was at the top. Um, so these falls here, um, a guy called Dudley Kenworthenley saw a vision back in the 1800s to use a water wheel. And this is the first spot in Australia that they used hydroelectricity for industrial use. Right here, um, up in the cliffs there, 
you can see some of the old pillars holding up some of the big stones so they don't collapse presumably to control the water to go um, through the channel and through the wheel but yeah it's unreal it's, um, the whole place is amazing I keep on saying that but it's, it's pretty true it's a nice spot to come to just when things can't get any better here in Waratah I saw a sign to a water tunnel so I'm gonna go and have a look at that um, something different gets better and better down here So that tunnel was a bit different to what I, I sort of expected, but it starts off in a valley uh, below a reservoir just, just around town here. And um, they actually have two meters of rainfall here a year, plus, plus the snow coming off um, the mountains, which are only, only about 40 minutes drive away. Um, so they control the water by uh, building the dams, building the reservoirs. So in winter time, they can collect all the water when that's their wet season. And then during summer, uh, they can control it um, with a, at a reasonable rate. Um, but they had that much water flow that they worked out they could um, use a 500 pound stamper to start crushing the rock. When the mine was in full operation, um, they ended up setting up 40 1,000 stampers to start um, crushing the rock to get the ore out. And at that time, the Mount Bischoff mine here in Waratah was the largest producing tin mine in the world, which is um, which is pretty cool for the area. And um, who would have thought? I, I never knew it was down here until I stopped here for a coffee, and I'm still still here six hours later. So yeah, pretty pretty great history down here. edges of Lake McIntosh which is a huge big lake with mountains down one side um, just turned off here at Tulla and I just saw a sign with some mining stuff so I'm gonna have a look there's a couple of towers here and a bit of rail museum across the road so I'm gonna hop out and spend a bit of time here and and have a good look around so just stop here at Tulla like I said to read about some of the history and um, they talk about here, uh, this place is linked back to Waratah back in 1871. Um, and this is the rugged remote country they had to work work with. The problem with when they found different minerals out here, the tracks they cut were pretty harsh and rugged and um, often um, they grew back fast because they just took the shortest route uh, where the bullet teams could go. And then they got investors um, to to put some money into the place and pay for guys prop, proper teams to um, cut the tracks. Um, this one track from Mild Creek to Rosebury by Tallow took them seven months, 120 kilometres, 27 river crossings. Look at that. Unbelievable. So here's the winch they use at this Mount Farrell mine. Um, used to lower the guys down a thousand feet and here's the head, look at that. Probably up to six men to get into here, lock themselves in and go down a thousand feet. So Galena is like a silver lead. Look at that. Unreal. Back in the day, this town was, was regarded as the most remote place in Tasmania and this little train that used to run on a little narrow gauge rail line was only way in and out. Look at this, across the road from the mining stuff. Um, there's so much stuff, even outside, it's all rusty but this stuff's all been restored and I reckon it goes too.
driving in here from Tulla, um, noticed this rock mountain ridge. Impressive all the way along here. And when I looked on Mohima, um, I found that it actually borders Lake McIntosh. Um, that side, and this side's the road, but I've just come to a viewing point. And here we go. I reckon if you drop something in there, you would never get it back. But apparently, there's a free campsite um, up there, another couple of miles to go, so I'll go across the bridge. Um, I'd like to drone it, but I've had a mate that droned a, uh, a damn wall once, and the, and the drone went to speed with him, and he soon jumped out of his Triton, I mean, out of his car, and ran after it. But um, yeah, this is unreal. I just thought I found a good spot but I've just walked down this random track where I'm going to have to camp and you wait till you see it plenty of firewood around here um, this is where I chose but I'm going to move wait till you see what I found How good is this? Even got my own fireplace. Plenty of fresh water. Water views. You pay me in bucks for this. How good is this? Don't want a